Hey guys, before we get started on this episode, I want to let you know that we did have a lot, and I mean a lot of technical difficulties, and so sometimes if you're watching the video version of this, uh, Corey's camera will be a little choppy. Uh, Discord decided to drop the ball halfway through recording this this podcast episode, and while I'm really disappointed in personally the way this turned out, um, there may be some things that you don't even notice. Um, my fluctuating volume levels on my microphone due to switching from Discord to Zoom, and then there were times where I had to actually go in and buy the full package of Zoom because Zoom only gives you 45 minutes to run through, and these podcast episodes take anywhere from an hour to three hours to record, and so you're going to notice some differences in volume, you're going to notice some differences in the video quality and stuff like that. I do apologize, but uh, we should be good to go with episode 8, but uh, I appreciate you guys watching this episode, so thank you all, and uh, enjoy. Talking about, like, why does the phone ring every day at this time? <laughs> I'm going to answer it for once. <laughs> like, even when I'm streaming, man, it always goes off, like, quarter after. Is day. it your landline or your cell phone? My fucking landline. I don't even know where it is. I didn't even know you had a landline. Hello? We would like to approach you about your car's extended warranty. Not interested. There we go. Maybe he'll stop. Phoning me! What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Gaming Effect. We are here with episode 7, uh, and today we are going to be talking about the PlayStation 2, our memories with it, and just some uh, background into our childhoods and the things we used to do for fun. Uh, we also appreciate that you guys have gotten us up over, I believe, 250 plays now. Uh, really appreciate all the support. It's been awesome. Don't forget to share and rate the podcast on all platforms. We're on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube, and SoundCloud. And that's about it. That's my spiel. Uh, <laughs> I'm Alex, a.k.a. Soldier First Class. I'm Corey, a.k.a. Dookie03. It's really weird to refer to myself as Corey, because like pretty much my mom and wife are like the only people that actually call me Corey, even in real life. Dude, like, that, every- that's... It's funny Everybody that you say calls that. Me Dookie. Everybody. I, well, it's funny that you say that because so my last name's like Moffat, yeah. and that has been what people have called me forever. Uh, you know, at my jobs, at school, like my teachers would call me Moffat. Like no oh, one would really? call me. Yeah, no one. None of my teachers would call on me as like Alex. You know, hey, do you have the answer or whatever? No, it was hey, always Big L. <laughs> yeah, it was always <laughs> uh, it was always Moffat. So I that's that's all I ever really went by. Well, then like. Every once in a while, somebody will say Alex, and it just, I'm like, I sometimes forget that that's my name. Yeah, yeah, because you're never called it. The worst is, like, I've got got friends that I've made in, like, Facebook groups and stuff, and and on Facebook, it's just, like, my fucking full name, and so people will be like, hi, Corey, and it's like, huh, it's like, (laughs) it's like weird, it's like, ah, only my mom and grandma call me that. You know what's, you know what's funny? And I, you've probably heard this a thousand times because this is just how it goes. But when I saw your name for the first time, I literally thought your last name was Doucher. Yeah, everybody uh, <laughs> I, thinks that. I was, I was, you know, I was like, "There's it's no, fucking, there's no fucking way his name is Doucher." And then every every single time I try to like, I'm like, "Okay, I'm Corey Doucher." And then, and they're like, how do you spell that? And I'm like, just give up now because you're not gonna. (laughs) Oh my God, dude. You have no idea how many people have like fucked up my last name spelling. And I think it's pretty easy. M-O-F-F-I-T-T. But there's people that are like, so is it like. F-A-T-T if I, if I like didn't. Yeah. Like you'd be surprised how many people fuck up my spelling and how many, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to spell it too, which is surprising, but. No, it's it's funny because like I I feel you because people try try to spell my name or whatever and they, almost everybody gets it wrong. So we're gonna get right into it. What are you playing or excited to play or f- 
go. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, finally, I finished Legend of Ligaya, like, last week. Um, it was really good. The ending was, uh, was, was really good, actually. The game... The game dragged for a little bit there, and it starts picking up uh, again big time when you uh, go back to the past to uh, play the shitty games that suck ass. Um, but you you learn to uh, you learn about the kind of the backstory of Noah and learn about like who her family actually is and stuff like that. But before that, there's like this huge kind of like drawn out slog section of the game. Like I would I would say like an entire quarter of the game really really drags and then that last quarter it picks up again it was nice being able to watch your playthrough and see the game again in another perspective and see someone else experience the story how are you uh enjoying wrestle quest because i know you've been streaming that lately oh yeah so i just started wrestle quest uh well when this airs would it would have been last week i just i started wrestle quest i'm enjoying it um, I want to say I'm not enjoying it as much as I hoped I, I would be. Um, the concept and and the references and everything are spot on. I absolutely love that. Like I am a pro wrestling fan, not so, not as much now as I once was, but I I love uh, pro wrestling. I love classic pro wrestling, all that stuff. And there's tons of references. Like there's a lot of uh, pro wrestlers in it. Like DDP is in it. Um, a whole a whole bunch of like pro wrestlers and weren't stuff. weren't the nasty we're, boys in it too? Yeah, the nasty boys were in there. The road warriors are a summon you can get. Um, the the one main character is a huge Macho Man Randy Savage fan, and he basically bases his character off of him being the uh, Muchacho Man uh, Randy Santos is is the main character's yeah. name. And then the other main character is Brink. Uh, Brink Logan, and he's kind of based off of Brett the Hitman Hart, who I was all—I was a huge fan of as a kid. Well, I wonder like, why. Why? Because he's Canadian. Because he's the goat, baby. <laughs> he is really good, Brett Hart. He is really good. He's Brett, not the goat. Kenny Omega is my goat. Brett and Owen were some of the greatest wrestlers of our time. See, I've never been an Owen Hart fan, but I think I was uh, like I was super young when Brett Hart was like on top, right? And he even he came. To the city I live in right now, which is about 45 minutes from my hometown, like no, like you would never meet and greet anyone famous in the middle of Saskatchewan. Yeah. So when Brett, the the hitman heart came here, man, I got like sunglasses signed by him, bandanas. I had, I, I had like everything signed by him. It was like, dude, it was a huge deal to have him here. Yeah. And, and the crazy thing is, is he always looked so small compared to like some of the other wrestlers. And he's fucking massive. Like, he's, yeah, he's still, still massive. big. Yeah, he's still a big yeah. guy. But yeah. in that business, you know, it's like the bigger the better or whatever. And yeah, and especially, yeah. especially in WWE. WWE. Yeah, yeah. That was Vince's thing. But yeah. Uh, but but yeah, he it was the the game is really the characters in the game are really good and the references are really good. But there's definitely like the game doesn't quite feel finished. Like there's a lot of jank. Um, the game has locked up on me once. Everyone I know who's played it, the game has locked up completely at least once, and they had to mm -hmm. reset the game. Um, and the uh, the quick time event stuff during the battles is not so much of an issue now, but when, when you first start playing, it's like the only way you can attack. I like it as a counter attack, but to have it for like all your attacks being a quick time event is kind of annoying. See, that's um, weird, because like, so... Um... Super Mario RPG did something kind of similar, but you actually had to figure out the timing window, and right. it, it didn't. Uh, and it was the same button all the time, though. Right, Do, doing damage did not depend on the QTEs. It was always like you would do your base damage, but if you wanted to add damage to it, you could time the hit, and it would. Yeah. and it was always the same button too. It wasn't like a random. Whatever. Yeah, and I I think if it was the same button like like Final Fantasy VIII, which we'll get to in the next podcast, in the next episode of Dragon Ball Z, uh, we'll get to that. But uh, no, I like I like it when it's uh, like Super Mario RPG, Final Fantasy VIII, where you can add damage by doing a timing a a button input press or whatever. But to have it be a quick time event, like a random button, and have a have a, like a timer go down. That it just gets kind of annoying. Like it's super easy to fuck that shit up. 
Um, I can understand for the counters. Like there's a lot of times where somebody will like, like, like hit you or whatever, and you go bouncing off the ropes and then you come back and then you can counter their next attack kind of thing that I understand because then you kind of want it to be a bit difficult, right. To be able to pull off a counter. Right. But, but to do extra damage, it's kind of annoying to have to do quick time event. But as you get a little further, like I'm about six hours into the game now, um, you start getting enough moves. They're called gimmicks, which would be like spells and like attack, like special attacks and stuff. Um, you get enough of them that don't need the quick time effects, and uh, I this, they can get pretty OP. So I don't have to do the quick time effects all that much anymore. And also, my other gripe is how incredibly slow the characters run. That's why I've never like a lot of my friends are big into um, Stardew Valley, and. I'm not a big like crafting guy to begin not, with. Yeah, like a farm sim kind of thing. Yeah, yeah but I, I did. I did play me a mean uh, Harvest Moon '64 back in the day. I fucking loved that game. So I was like, oh, I'll grab Stardew Valley. All my friends are playing it. But the runs, the speed that that character runs is so slow. It's just fucking painful for me to play. And this game has like the exact same run speed, and it drives me crazy. So I'm I'm finished with Baldur's Gate three finally. Uh, I absolutely loved it. Probably so far my game of the year right now. Nice. Um, I I don't see anything beating it for me unless armored core six just blows me the fuck away but i i think think baldur's gate 3 is my game of the year um a really good game like i've said in previous episodes so i won't uh i won't like reiterate as much the positives are you know the approach to combat is very open the really the approach to anything because like if you have a locked door and let's say you want to pile up some crates and just jump over the wall. There are areas where you can do that and completely circumvent a locked door in in a location. And I think that's great. Um, the customization of the characters is insane. You can even customize your party members that are, like, set. So, like, if you want to, you can re... Uh, you can redo all the characters in the game and build them to your... however you want. Oh, so even even characters that like are part of the story and stuff that yeah, like pre-established you... characters can oh, okay. be altered however you want. So if you want, oh, like, that's cool. Yeah, so if you want like the tank character to swap to being like a wizard, you can do that, and it doesn't. Oh, because basically the characters are just a template, and they give you like what that character is supposed to be. Like Carlac is like your two-handed like your two-handed swords or axes or whatever like she's your tank character she can carry a lot uh she like has high defense high offense but you can switch her if you want to make her like a warlock or something you can do that right. or all that so so i really like that aspect of it um you know it's basically a tabletop rpg in video game form but it's it's really good and, and the music's really good too and the atmosphere and everything. So yeah, it's it's most likely my game of the year. Um I just started Armored Core Six a couple days right. ago. It's fucking awesome. The great thing about it is it like it is hard, it's it's difficult, but the checkpoints are very generous. So oh, okay. like the mission I did last night where I was I was fighting that boss, fucking Balteus, because he's a douchebag. But it, you start out and you have to destroy these like these giant guns that are posted around the the arena, the arena. Then you once you destroy that, you hit a checkpoint, you move to the next section of the map where you have to do the same thing. And then you hit a checkpoint. And then after that, you fight like the first like mid boss of the stage. And then once you beat him, checkpoint. You destroy this uh thing it's just it's just a thing you walk in and destroy, and then it leads to the final battle of that stage against Balteus. Yeah. But like you, once you reach Balteus, you have hit a checkpoint, and then you are there. And when you die, like all of your health uh, packs regenerate, just like Souls games. All of your yeah, health packs yeah. regenerate. You you regenerate. You can go in and swap your weapons out or loadouts that you have if you want. Uh, you have right. the ability to save multiple loadouts. So, like, if you are running into a mission and, like, you start out this segment, you're a lightweight 
and that works for that section. But you get like halfway through the level, and then you start needing like a tankier build. Build. If you yeah. have that, if you have that build saved, you can once you die or whatever, you can go into the assembly, load that build, and it automatically loads it for you. So you don't have to just oh, okay. rebuild if you want. Or you can actually fully rebuild your build in the menus and and do it like that if you want. So if like there's a weapon you want to swap out, you can. Or if you want the tank, but you want a different weapon on it, you can load the tank, then swap the weapon and stuff like that. You can do like each arm can have two weapons if you want. It's an upgrade later. Uh, okay. You earn money doing these missions and doing the arena missions and stuff, and you use that to buy parts. So if you want, if there's this gun you're looking at and you want to buy it, you have to earn the money to buy it. But the money's pretty generous. Like, oh, that's good. It encourages you to customize and swap weapons and swap builds and and find what works for each part of the mission. And like, you can do a certain build the entire game, but it it it's arguably the most boring way to play the game like right. to be honest like if you wanted to go an an all lightweight build and just swap the guns you can yeah. do that but the guns have weight and so do your body parts and stuff and like right, your legs yeah. and stuff like that can only hold so much weight so you have to um like figure out what builds Work will best work for each situation right or work best for your play style too because not every yeah. build is going to work to you either so sticking with one build works technically but it's yeah, yeah. it's by far you can the make it work but it's uh... right by far the most boring way to play would be doing the same exact build the entire game i have experience with armored core in the past but i i'm not like a huge fan yeah this yeah. game might actually make me become more of a fan of armored core yeah but I heard four answer was really good. Like the four, I've heard that the too, one. but yeah. I've not uh, I've not played that one. I think I played Armored Core two. I believe oh, okay. the only one I played a little bit of was the first one. I think it was on PS one. I think yeah, I played a little bit of that one. It was pretty fun. It was it was a bit jank, but it was also like early PS one where like mm -hmm. I don't know all games were kind of jank back then. Like you look at like Tomb Raider and stuff like that, and it was kind of they all kind of controlled pretty weird. Yeah, speaking of PS one. We were going to talk a little bit about um, what we used to do as kids and stuff besides, obviously, video games, because that's what we yeah. was our big thing. Um, I We actually were talking before the podcast that, like, when I was younger, I literally, like, used to be more of a daredevil than I am now. And I think maybe it's because, like, I didn't give a shit as a kid. You think you're kind of invincible when you're a kid, like you right, know stuff well, will hurt, but you never think you're gonna have like permanent injuries when you're well, a kid. Well, and the like, thing never. is, you also don't think about like going to the hospital costing money or going to the doctor costing money. So you just it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it does here, asshole. <laughs> but uh, it's 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 one of those things where like you don't understand the concept of getting hurt and it costing money. Right. Now I'm like fuck, I don't want to get hurt, because if I do, then I'm going to fucking, I'm going to have to pay for it myself, because I'm not a kid anymore. Right. So, like, I I think what's, what kicked off me not uh, being as, as courageous as I used to be was right. I, I used to ride my BMX bike all the time. I loved that shit. That was, like, my favorite thing to do was ride my BMX bike. And, you know, with the pegs and the everything, you know what yeah. I mean? Like. Yeah. I think everybody had that fucking uh that uh could you, could you grind spike. rails and shit with your on pegs or not? I could, but I was not very comfortable doing uh, it. Yeah, I could I'd never even try. So uh you know those like uh railroad like the long they call them railroad ties. Yeah. they're yeah. So we used to have one that was like you know how some people have like concrete for their for their parking areas. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. like the the curb or whatever. Well, we yeah, had yeah. we had a, a railroad tie instead for okay, ours. Yeah, and I would yeah, my mom take. Has that, we yeah. had like a a stiff board, like a like a wide piece of wood that I would put across it, and then I would ride my bike and ramp on it. Oh, okay, yeah. right. So I used to do like tricks and stuff. I used to be on my bike all the time. Well, I was going down a gravel here at hill near where I live, and my spoke broke out. 
and it Ooh. stuck out straight, like, out of my wheel, and it got caught in, like, the fork of my fucking bike, yeah, yeah, my yeah. front tire, and it just stopped it dead in its fucking tracks, oh. and I'm going down the hill. It throws me over the handlebars. Oh, my God. And my knee got so fucked up, you could almost see the kneecap. Jesus. And um, after that, I spent, like, weeks healing that and recovering because like my knee was so fucked and my knee's fucked to this day like it's still you know when the pressure changes it hurts yeah yeah yeah. when the yeah. weather comes in differently it hurts like yeah, yeah yeah all kinds of shit right and i still have lasting damage from that and after that and after the recovery time i wasn't as fucking courageous as i used to be <laughs> i was like eh, this isn't fun i don't like this so yeah yeah uh yeah i used to ride my bike a lot um hang out with my friends a lot, uh, play a lot of video games. We, uh, so I, I have a fucking bum knee story too. I, when I was, uh, before I was like old enough to like ride my BMX bike and do stuff like that, me and my cousins would always like climb trees and shit. And I remember climbing this one tree and it was like the one tree we always wanted to climb because it was, uh, you could get high enough to where, like, you know, when there's like a house that has like a roof here and then there's like a, there's like windows on the second floor and then a roof up here. Mm -hmm. We would always try to climb to get above the, the window or whatever. And so I remember the one time I almost did it and I was like all the way up there. And then I went to like grab onto a branch to like, kind of like boost myself up a bit higher and the branch broke. And I, not, not only did I fall, but I fell and it would have been like, it would have been like almost two full stories Ooh. and my fucking knee smashed on the sidewalk. And that, Oh, and that, bro, that fucking hurts just thinking about it. Yeah. So oh. I have, I I, have that, I still have a scar. I don't know. I don't know if you can see it on there. Oh no, yeah. My, my scar right on my knee is nasty. If I have like a tan, you can see it usually, but there's like a big scar right here from, from like hitting my knee on the sidewalk. The worst part is my mom was like one of those, one of those parents that like would not take you to the doctor unless you were like coughing up blood. So Which is hilarious since it's free, because my mom was the I same know. way. My mom was the same fucking way, but it was because, you know, we didn't have insurance growing up. Yeah. And yeah. and so like if you got hurt or like sick, your ass did not go to the doctor unless your fucking head was falling off or Yeah, that's how like, my mom was. Or too, like man. you were on death's door. And I'm not saying like my, my parents were neglectful or anything. But yeah, it, yeah, it's no, not like how, it is today. We're that's like, how like that generation. I think it just is. I, I yeah, I real I I do too. Like, I mean, yeah. Granted, like when I had pneumonia when I was a kid, my parents took me to the doctor. Obviously, yeah, yeah. But yeah. like, it had to be like you weren't going for a sniffle and you weren't going for like a scratch yeah. or anything. Like you had to need stitches, or like with my knee situation, they took me. Or, um, famous example for me, uh. When I was 13, I think, me and my dad were riding a four-wheeler, and the hand we were sitting idle, and the handlebars jerked for some reason. Just out of nowhere, they just jerked like that. And my dad's thumb hit the accelerator. Oh, shit. Well, when he did, it flipped us, and it flipped the four-wheeler onto my leg. Jeez. And I was face down in a mud puddle in our driveway, because our driveway was just dirt. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. I was face down in a fucking mud puddle. My shoulder slammed into the into the gravel. My knee was underneath the fucking four wheeler, and oh God, I was. They got the four wheeler off of us, and um, went in. I had a, I had some scratches, like I had some missing skin on my shoulder. Yeah, yeah. And, and my knee had a ended up. I ended up with a scar on my knee from it, but my knee was fucked up a little bit. Did we go to the doctor? No, we just poured some peroxide on it yeah, and fuck fucking man. went on our way. And like, yeah, obviously, did. obviously it hurt for a couple of weeks, but once it healed yeah. up, I was like, man, eh, I didn't really need to go to the doctor. But you know, nowadays it's like people are like, oh my god, you know, we got to go to the doctor, or we got to do this or whatever. But it's funny that we yeah. both grew up in completely different healthcare systems, and both of our parents were the same way. Like, you're not going, right, to, the you're not going to the fucking doctor. Yeah. So what happened was I remember and my fucking face hit the ground too, man. Like my face was like all fucked up. Probably explains a lot right now. I'm going to tell you. But uh, I was uh, my face was like all black and blue, like on this side. And uh, my mom 
like I was crying. So my cousin went and got my mom and my mom was like, okay, we got to go home. And then instead of taking me to the doctor, she, uh, we had like a rental, like a game rental company or a store or whatever in our town. And she let me pick whatever game I wanted to rent for the week. And I got to stay home from school and I played Donkey Kong Classics, which is like Don- the original Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. on the NES. Dude, and that's fucking that hilarious. Because I couldn't even fucking walk, dude. And that was my doctor. It was fucking Donkey Kong Classics. It's like, dude, I, I pro- like my knee is still fucked to a point to this the day. The irony would have been if you'd have picked Dr. Mario. <laughs> that would have been funny. My doctor was fucking Dr. Mario. <laughs> Uh, no, but, but yeah, same thing. Like if it's, if it gets too humid or whatever, my knee will get sore and all that stuff. Um, she was like, she made me wear sunglasses to school for like, for like my first week back. Cause my fucking eye was all bloodshot still like Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, and then the time I think, cause you, you talked about your, your kind of like, okay, I'm done doing like this daredevil shit moment. So my my I'm done doing this daredevil shit moment was probably like two or three years after this when we used to hit we used to hit jumps a lot like we had like a lot of dirt trails and stuff around my hometown and we would hit we would hit jumps and uh, remember remember when you're like super young and you're trying to build a jump but yes. it's just like a board on a thing and it just all it does is you ride your bike over and it tips at <laughs> the boat yeah. flips up. <laughs> Yeah, but but anyways, we would do that for a bit. But then as we got a little older, we would we would build like these ramps out of dirt and we would keep this one. We were like trying to build the biggest jump and we would see who could jump the highest. And um, there was this one spot where um, we built a jump and I don't know what it was. It was there's like the fire hall and there's like this big hose outside the fire hall that like swings down. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's to fill the the water trucks maybe. And people would – we'd build the jump so that you could hit a jump on your bike and then like grab the fire hose and swing from it <laughs> and then land. Uh, um, I, was, I, already, I, I can already tell where this is going. No, I never fucking grabbed the hose. Fuck that shit. But oh, okay. I, hit the, I hit the jump. And I uh, we would try to do tricks like spin the spin the handlebars or do the whatever thing with your bring your tail out and then back. And I remember trying to do the spin the handlebars and it always worked like I'd done it a number of times. And for I don't know if it hit me in the leg or what I go to spin the handlebars and it is like straight like this. I come down, dude. I land the handlebars like this and fucking boom right in the nuts. <laughs> Like, and my wheel and my wheel is sideways, right? When I come down, so there's no glide out. It's just like (laughs) fucking boom, like as hard as you can imagine. Oh my god! And that that was my like, dude. Your camera was so choppy during that whole thing, but it's hilarious watching it go in like slow motion. (laughs) It was, dude. My I, oh, it was horrible. And my mom took me to the doctor for that one because it was like. It was probably brutal. Because probably because your nuts almost shot through your asshole. Yeah, dude. I thought I'd ruptured a nut for sure. <laughs> Every everything was fine though. Oh but my god. It was brutal. Like, like you know how when you get like hit in the nuts and it like kind of like hurts up in your stomach and oh, stuff? Oh yeah. It felt like that for like two days. <laughs> oh. It was horrible. And my fucking bike was fucked after that too. Cause I cause I landed on like a side like my wheel was right sideways. Well you probably bent it, your rims. It, yeah, I bent the rim like this. It was nuts, man. I I, I don't think I ever went b- BMXing again after that. I was like, fuck that shit. Sorry about that guys. We had some technical difficulties with some cameras and stuff, so uh we actually swapped over to Zoom instead of Discord. Uh and hopefully this is a lot better quality wise. Uh apologize for that. But Anyway, we now that we've talked about how horribly scarred we were as children because of our, <laughs> our idiot tendencies, uh, figuratively and literally scarred, uh, we are going to talk about our main topic today, and that is the wonderful era of the PlayStation 2. Uh, I One of the first games that comes to mind when I think PlayStation 2, and it's actually the first game that I bought when I got my PlayStation 2, and that is Final Fantasy X. What's the first game that pops into your mind? 
first game that pops into my mind was like the probably the first PS2 game I played, which was Kessin 2, which is like a fucking I don't even know. It's like, do you remember um oh, what was it? Clan of Grey Wolf on the uh on the Super Nintendo? Yeah. It's it was that, but on PS2 basically. Like it was um i just remember being blown away because there was like all these fucking soldiers just going at it all at once Mm -hmm. in like full 3d polygon graphics which absolutely blew my mind like my cousin had that game um and that yeah that like knocked my cock clean off when i saw that so ever since i saw that i wanted a I wanted a ps2 really bad but i don't even know what the first game i got was um, it might have been Final Fantasy X because my buddy Paul had Final Fantasy X, and then when I got it, it was already like a greatest hits. So I don't know if I, if that was the first one I got. I know I played a lot of like Dark Cloud and shit on it too. Mm-hmm. What about Rogue Galaxy? Was that a PS2 game? Yeah, that was. That was that was like my favorite game of all time for a little while. There, it kind of aged not the greatest. Like I would say Dark Cloud 2 tops it now for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but that game was so good when it came out. Like it was like if you took if you took like Dragon Ball Z, Pirates of the Caribbean, and fucking Star Wars and combined it. That's kind of what what Rogue Galaxy had going on. It was a uh, action RPG. The crafting system was about this like pretty similar to what you'd find in in like Dark Cloud 2 and stuff like that. You'd build like a little factory and meld things together but that was like that was like the first game we kind of talked about it uh i think two podcasts ago that was like the first game that i put like 300 hours into and just like 100 percented. i had mm-hmm. every single item in that yeah, I game think, i think you did mention that yeah um so a little background on the playstation 2 and playstation in general i pulled up the list of the best-selling game consoles of all time uh, this one's actually pretty neck and neck, and I'm not sure how much they still track these. Right. But according to, um, this, the PlayStation 2 is still the highest selling console of all time. After I believe after it. After releasing 23 years ago. And it actually, there's a notation and it says final sales sales are greater than the reported figure. And this is just what's reported. So yeah. 155 million PS2s were sold from 2000 to now, but that number is actually higher, but they haven't tracked it for a while. It says. Right. So the next selling best selling console was the Nintendo DS with 154 million. It prints then, money. And the Nintendo, yeah. And the Nintendo switch. So those are the top three. So, one came out four years after the PS2. One came out six year or uh, six years ago. Where's the, uh, which the where's Switch the is Switch? actually? Yeah, yeah. The Switch is actually really impressive at 129.53 million. And what's the PS2 at? 155. Yeah, I I think the Switch could surpass it. Oh, maybe. I think it's going to honestly. It, yeah. it just keeps going up, and with and with Sony and Xbox moving into the next generation, but the Switch staying that way. Like, yeah. you know, you have two major Zelda titles on Switch. You have Mario right. Odyssey. Like, you have games that still hold up to this day that came out when the Switch came out. Yeah. Like, so the Switch is still going to be popular for a while. Um, I think, I think so. it has, it still has a lot of sale power. Um, there have been a lot of rumors that they are, Nintendo is working on their next console, which I'm kind of afraid of because Nintendo has this whole thing where they kind of release a console and it does really well and then they, they release another one and it does really bad like other than right. the nes and super nes it's been pretty well even like the n64 was not great and then the the gamecube w- w- despite it being a good console did not do well at all and then the wii did really well and then the wii u did sh- absolutely terrible so mm-hmm. i'm a little uh i don't know as hesitant i guess to get excited about a su- successor to the switch well, and, like, this list actually really surprised me because I didn't realize just how much PlayStation had sold. And like, as a brand as total? As a brand, because, like, yeah. I knew the PlayStation 2 was the highest-selling console of all time, but I did not realize that, like, PlayStation has, like, five, four of the top eight consoles Jeez. of all Who's, time. Is Nintendo the other four, though? Uh, yes. 
that's kind of what I figured. Except Xbox 360 did really well, so I would have maybe Xbox thought... 360 did slightly under what the PlayStation 3 did, which... It did under the PS3. Yeah, PS3 had 87.4 million and Xbox 360 sold 84 million, which I own both. So I'm actually in both of those categories, but it's crazy because like even the PlayStation Portable sold almost as much as the Xbox 360. So the PSP is still up there. So here's the list and you know, I'll notate where, you know, obviously Sony ranks in this. So, this is going to go in order. Number one is PlayStation 2. Right. Number two is DS. Number three is Switch. Uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Color is combined. And that's number four. PlayStation 4 is number five. PlayStation Original is number six. Then it goes the Wii at number seven. PlayStation 3 at number eight. Xbox 360 at number nine. Game Boy Advance at number 10, and you could honestly switch the Game Boy Advance and the PlayStation Portable, because... They're pretty tied, pretty even. Well, so, the Game Boy Advance came out in 2001, and it sold 81 million. The PlayStation Portable came out in 2004, and sold 80 to 82 million, and that is a, um estimate because they it says here they stopped reporting individual platform sales in 2012 oh okay they continue to update it sporadically is what it says um but yeah out of the top 11 uh, playstation has five of them Uh, yeah that's crazy but if you think about it like if you think back like everyone i knew had a ps2 you know what i mean same and almost yeah. everyone I knew had a DS and a PSP. Like, if if you think about it, it's not it's not super surprising. It's surprising that it's above. Like, I would I would think like the PS2 I can understand is at the top, but I would have thought like the NES would have been way up there as well. But uh, yeah, the the NES only sold. Uh, let's see. So the SNE- the Super Nintendo sold forty nine million, and the Let's see. The NES sold. I actually don't see it. Might be a ways down. Yeah. But what I think what had happened because we we always think of like the golden era of gaming as like the NES Master System Genesis era oh, kind of oh, thing. Oh, hold on. NES sold sixty one point nine million. So actually, uh, it uh. It sold a lot. Yeah. It actually sold more than the the Super Nintendo, which is very surprising. No, that doesn't surprise me, honestly, because the 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 NES was like the big one, like that that really brought gaming home, right? Like right. people had Atari and shit, but nobody played Atari like they played Nintendo. Super Mario three, uh Mega Man series. like you had so yeah, many like true. like you think now even you'll you'll have like oh like you were just saying there's two Zelda games on the on the Switch there's two Mario games or one Mario game but back then it was like there were three Castlevania games there were six fucking Mega Man games on the NES you, like that game got its miles man like it was there there were like even like Dragon Quest there are four fucking Dragon Quest games if if Final Fantasy would have came over. There would have been three Final Fantasies. Now it's like you're lucky to get one game from a series on on one console before it switches to the next one. Kind well, of and if you think about it, like the history of of gaming, usually a console's lifespan, and even handheld games, like the console's lifespan is usually about six to seven years on average. Yeah, I so I like, find like seven to ten. Like you could. Like there's usually usually you've moved on by that seven to ten period, but they usually still will make like there's usually games up to that ten year point kind of thing. Yeah, that that makes sense. Um, because like yeah, well look at the PlayStation Four. Like there are still games being made for the PlayStation Four. Uh, that you know obviously the PlayStation Four has been out since 2013. It's 2023. That's ten years. Yeah. So it's still I mean this the PlayStation 4 is still selling units to this day. Absolutely. Yeah. So it makes sense too that like they're not going to completely abandon the system before it. And usually there are two versions of the same game sometimes like 
Yeah, um, yeah. You like completely different ones. Like well, especially on like the handhelds, you saw mm-hmm. that a lot. Like you'd have like a game on like the GameCube and PS2, and then you'd have like the the DS version, which was an you entirely sold different. Ten game, million copies, which is kind of weird. And every once in a while, the the handheld one would be like better, which was weird. Like it didn't happen often, but every once in a while. Yeah, it's um, just it's just crazy to me that like you don't think about like today all like these sales numbers and stuff like everybody yeah. talks about sales all the time like yeah yeah like yeah. oh this console sold more than this console this is why this console is better like it's a lot of console war bullshit but like, yeah yeah at the at the end of the day like back then we didn't think about sales like obviously companies no no did, no but we didn't as as gamers we didn't think about sales it wasn't a big deal but now on the the advent of the internet like we were sharing this data companies were sharing what their sales numbers were. And like, now it's like a badge of honor. Like yeah. games are talking more about it openly because it's like a, it's a, because they are selling so much. Well, it's a signal of success. Like it's a, yeah. it's, it's, you are showing that your game is successful because you like, and yeah. that is a successful game launch. Like, or, you know, you, like, a series has sold 100 million copies. Like, the whole, let's say the whole Final Fantasy series has sold 100 million copies in its entirety. Like, that's a sales right, milestone right. that people can kind of get behind. Yeah. And so, with the with the internet, that's what people gauge success with now. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, uh, you know, people will be fighting on, on Twitter about a game, and they'll say, oh, well... If your game's so great, why did it only sell three million copies? And the game that I like sold seven. And it's yeah. like, you know, that doesn't even... always constitute quality either, no. right? Like, yeah, right. Like, if we were gonna go with, with, isn't Minecraft like the highest no it's selling t- game of all time? Tetris. Is it Tetris? Tetris is the highest sold game ever, and that doesn't necessarily indicate that it's a fucking you know a bad yeah, yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. But people use sales numbers to gauge all this stuff like you know the witcher 3 has sold 50 million copies i think um, makes sense it's been re-released on every single console right. so it's like it's skyrim witcher maybe it's the entire series but i think it's just witcher 3 i could be wrong my buddy craig will probably be able to correct me on well i know he'll be able to correct me on this but uh yeah it's like people use it as kind of like ammunition in an, in an yeah. argument and it's kind of dumb it is, I agree. But I, yeah. I also understand it from the perspective of like when you like a series or you like a game, you want it to succeed. Yeah, absolutely. Because it 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 means that you're gonna get more sequels too, right? Like it, right. It, if if a game succeeds, the odds of it continuing are much higher than if, if something you like doesn't do very well. Like there's nothing right. more heartbreaking than that. That when well, you yeah, find a like, game you love and it's right. just dead in the water well, kind of thing. Well, look at how many, how many games that have we played over the years that we really, really love and wish would come back, and then they don't because, well, they only sold a million copies and they were looking to sell three to, to yeah, try to exactly. reinvest. And, that, and that's what kind of sucks is like, you know, you, you find these games, and even some that came out on PS2 that you're like, man, I'd love to have a sequel, or I'd love that if they if they did this as a series, and then they yeah. just don't exist. Could you imagine anymore. if they did a Dark Cloud three on like PS5? Well, look at Lagaya. Lagaya had Legend of Lagaya and Legend and then of Lagaya two. Yeah. And now that series is completely dead, and that that has something. The to dev do with, team like, is gone. Yeah, the dev too, team's gone but... too. But it it sucks is like you find these games you love, and then they just kind of fall off the map. It could be worse though. Um, Lunar, the Lunar series, they made two of them on the Sega CD. Excellent, phenomenal games. Some of the best JRPGs I've ever played. They uh, they remade them on the PS One, even better, uh, arguably. And then they've remade like the first one a couple times on like the PSP. I think the GBA and stuff like that. And then and then they're like, for whatever reason, they're like, let's make a sequel. On um, and then they made it on the DS, and it was the worst fucking game ever made yeah. so i mean so i mean there's there's definitely worse things than not getting a sequel <laughs> there's getting the world's worst sequel yeah that's... so in, in, in the lunar lunar fandom we just we, we it's like a a meme and a joke that lunar dragon song doesn't exist there's yeah, only lunar awful. one and two fuck that dude 
Yeah. It's like I love Golden Sun, and I wish that would come back. And yeah, that would be good. Okay, so I've heard Camelot still exists. I've heard because people have been playing Sea of Stars, and and like it's always it's been billed as like uh, a big homage to Chrono Trigger. But people that have played it have been saying it feels almost more like you're playing Golden Sun. It does. Like, I Trigger. played the demo Trigger. of Sea of oh, Stars. Oh, okay, really? And it felt like the atmosphere of golden sun so oh. I, I i really enjoyed the demo i haven't obviously i'm i'm gonna play uh armored core six before i get to it but yeah anyway we kind of went on a little bit of a tangent um let's bring it back to the ps2 so yeah yeah again we said the ps2 is one of the highest selling consoles of all time or well, it is the highest selling console of all time i should say um you know final fantasy 10 comes to mind uh but another game that comes to mind is is one of the first few games I ever bought for PS2. Enter the Matrix. Oh yeah, I played that at my buddy's house. That game is a fucking garbage ass game, and I fucking love it, dude. It yeah, is so I we good. I haven't played it in years, but I remember loving it back in the day. But that was when Matrix was like on top of the world too, right? right? Matrix was one of the most popular movies around at the time. Like everybody was watching it, everybody was enjoying it, so they were capitalizing on. It's the very first Matrix game, um, and it was very basic, like, combat was, you know, circle to kick, or, you know, but you you used your Matrix abilities and stuff in combat. I remember you could, like, run up walls and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so and you like, could run yeah. up walls, and you could, like, it was so awesome. I replayed that game probably a hundred fucking times. I loved that fucking game. And they had, like, real-life cutscenes, like, they filmed the cutscenes, and it was basically supposed to be, like, what happened between, uh, The Matrix. And the second one, right? And the second one, which I think was The Matrix Reloaded? I think so, too, but I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, it's I can't remember. It's been so long since yeah, I... Yeah, I can't remember the, what the name... The first movie's the only good one anyways. Uh, a little bit. Uh, I, I thought I liked number two. Um, the highway scene's classic, but anyway... That part is cool, yeah. Yeah, um, I... Plus, that chick is super hot in that fucking movie. The Merovingian's uh, girlfriend or whatever she is. Oh, okay. I don't but, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm a nerd, so I remember stupid <laughs> shit. I remember stupid shit like that all the time. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, Enter the Matrix was really good. The, the Path of Neo wasn't that great. Like, it was okay, but, like, I think I'll always love Enter the Matrix because it was one of the few games that I actually got. And the way I bought my PS2 is, like, my dad uh, owned his own business for a while. And um, because of that, he would let me work in his business for, like, $5 an hour. And back then, right. like, $5 an hour wasn't the wor- like the worst thing in the world. Especially was, if you're, like, like a kid. Yeah. That was back in, like, early 2000s, so $5 an hour wasn't that far off from minimum wage back then, and that wasn't a bad wage for a teenager. Right, right. And so, like, I remember working in my dad's shop for, like, hours and hours and hours, and I finally saved up, and I bought my PS2, and I got Final Fantasy X, and then I got Enter the Matrix. Uh, I also played a lot of Madden on PS2 because that was like the last time that Madden was fucking good. Was around <laughs> like the PS2 like transition sort of into the PS3 area. Like I think Madden 11 or 12, I think, had like a fucking banger soundtrack. And like okay. the game was actually fun. Um, but the game hasn't been fun since like the next gen wave, which was like PS4 ps5 and i've always wished that madden would go back to uh those days like that quality but the problem is is like over the years we have lost kind of like we talked about in our nostalgia trip episode where we were talking about the like the loss of charm yeah some games have also lost their identity yeah along the way not just their charm but like their identity as a whole and Madden is one of those franchises where, like... Like Final Fantasy. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one alone. Because I've been having some kind of strong feelings about JRPGs in general lately that I'll, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll keep to myself until the day I'm ready to unleash that fucking monster. But <laughs> uh, I... 
I kind of miss the days of the PS2 where like things were just simple. Like, you know, like we talked last episode about Test Drive Eve of Destruction. And oh, how yeah. That, yeah, that yeah. was like a fun game that we used to play or whatever. And those were the days like that was the PS2 days, the, the original Xbox days. Like, yeah, I remember I had a PS2. My friends all had PS2s. And then we all got Xboxes because of like Halo, Halo 2. Um, and all that, but, like, the PlayStation 2 for me was, like, I had a PlayStation 1, and obviously, like, I was shaped by the PlayStation 1 with, like, the yeah, Final Fantasy same, series, yeah. but I feel like the PlayStation 2 was where I was old enough and understood games on a on a better level. Yeah, where, you, like, appreciated them on a different level. Right, and, and, like, I, that was the first time that I was buying games with my money. Yeah. Like, yeah, I always yeah, yeah. had, like, birthday money and stuff, but that never really felt like my money. Yeah. I earned my PS2 games. Like, I worked in my dad's shop. I, you know, I did chores around the house to, to help pay for my games or whatever. Like, yeah, I, I realize it's kind of the same thing as getting birthday money, but because I was working to earn it. Yeah. yeah. I, it felt more real that I was getting these games, and I bought the entire console for myself. And it was more um, important that you you like kind of vetted your games a bit, like right. the The worst is like you you save up for like a couple months, and then you go go home with Dragon Ball Z sagas or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, and at the time, like to get my gaming news because we didn't have internet at home until like way after everybody had already had internet. Yeah, same. And it was on like a shitty USB that we got from like our cell phone company where you like oh, plug it into no, Yeah, not you plug that kind. Yeah, you plug it into your fucking laptop or whatever and then like the internet comes from that. Uh, and it's like a cell tower kind of thing. It was like this really awful. shitty thing. I have a funny story about this, but we'll get into that in a second. But like that's how we had internet. Well, because of that, like I had to rely on stuff like Nintendo Power and yeah, yeah, magazines, EGM and, and stuff, and yeah. and yeah, and friends and stuff that were talking about games or whatever. So, um, or like back in the day, um, movies and stuff or TV shows would actually X play would advertise. Yeah, X play would advertise video games. Yeah, so that's how I would find out about them instead of like now where you can't get on Twitter or Facebook without seeing, like, a video game announcement or yeah. an ad or a well, sponsored even on, thing. Even on TV now, like, at that time, that was kind of like when video game... I think PS1 was when video game TV commercials started to happen, but they were rare as fuck to see. Well, Nintendo had some, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that era was, like... It, it was super rare to see. But the PS2 was where you started actually kind of seeing like more frequent TV commercials. Um, I'd say it wasn't until PS3 era where like it was like a regular thing to see video game commercials on TV. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing too about PS2 games. Like I remember looking at the cover of PS2 games and being extremely excited to play the game that was in it because like yeah. um, now kind of to, we're kind of in an era where like people want to see like sleek designs they want to see like real simple like a colored background with a character on it and like box art has has like completely changed over the years and the ps2 era had some of my favorite like you you cannot mistake the front cover of final fantasy 10 yeah you can't mistake like the the front cover of enter the matrix because it was like the matrix lettering like the the classic like matrix yeah, symbols the Japanese coming down and the yeah, yeah and yeah. and it was holographic and it said enter the matrix across the cover and it was like really cool looking and it you know you moved it and it would shine or you know i i think i want to say so the ps2 did not have the reversible covers yet because the cases no, were all yeah the cases were all black but do you remember when the ps2 first came out and like uh the discs were blue on the bottom i did have one blue disc yeah i had yeah. one game like when the ps2 first came out the the discs on the bot like on the bottom were blue those ones like don't work very well the blue the blue disc well, like find. if they got like a, a smidgen of a scratch they didn't work they were fucked yeah. yeah but i had games that had the regular like disc bottom yeah and they like scratched a fuck would still play yeah they would yeah 
So well, then they started doing like the dual dual layer DVDs and stuff like that too, right? Mm-hmm. Where where you could fit like w- like two DVDs worth of space on it, kind of thing. Well, and it's crazy too because like some games, like you ever see like those cases where they hold two discs, but they literally have no reason to because the game Legend only comes of the with- Gaia. <laughs> Legend- <laughs> yeah, the game only comes with one. You know. Yeah. But I have no idea why they did that. Yeah, the PS2 was weird. But I remember the PS2 cases had the memory card thing at the top. Right. They always did. Yeah. And that, that was, was really weird. cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like box art has really changed over the years. And I, I think the PS2 era has some of my favorites. Um, yeah, it did. It did. I think you know, because the box was big enough that they could fit like something real nice in there. Whereas like the PS1 they were working with such a small mm-hmm. kind of square of space that it it generally like they still have some iconic box art don't get me wrong but the uh the P, I, I feel like the NES the Genesis and the PS2 had probably the best mm-hmm. the best box art because it wasn't trying to be like minimalist and stuff they mm-hmm. were just trying to put on a a good a good like picture of of like what the game encompassed and stuff like that right it was supposed to grab you you know and I feel yeah. like like we're at an age now where like, yeah, box art can kind of grab you, but the internet spreads so much information about games you now. You already know, yeah, what you're Right. The box art before. isn't as important, which in some ways that's great. I, I'm glad yeah. that we have the information we need to buy games that we want to buy and, and avoid yeah. games that we don't. But at the same time, there I feel There's like a sense of wonder and like right. mysticism. Yeah. You you see a box art and you're like, man, that looks like a great fucking game. Let me look at the back or whatever. But now you just oh that looks kind of cool. Let me let me just look it up on on fucking YouTube or the internet real quick and in yeah. like 5 seconds you already know you if you're going to buy this game or not. Like yeah. I get that 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 does save you money and you know we've talked about in the past like you know we didn't have as much money growing up as maybe some other people so like we had to vet our games really hard. Yeah. And sometimes we'd have to buy games that our friends wanted and they would buy games that we wanted and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So and you so could trade. Yeah, so like you had to be very careful and box art was a way to hook people and entice people. But we kind of yeah. lost that along the way. And I think that's why we're seeing more simple box art because it's less, it's less work. It does, number one. Yeah. It number doesn't, t- the games aren't relying on the art to sell themselves kind of thing. Right. It's not a marketing tactic as much anymore as it used to be. Whereas yeah. in the back in the day, that was a marketing tactic was Absolutely. what are, what are we going to put on the cover of this game or what are we going to have? And I think the PS2 era has some of the best examples of marketing games. Like, you know, as much as I fucking hate this game, Dirge of Cerberus. Yeah. If, that if you had look great at that, box it art. has a great fucking box art, yeah, it does. shitty fucking game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like fucking one of the worst games I've ever played. And I'm sorry, there it has its defenders. I don't give a fuck. That game is trash. It is garbo, yeah. It is fucking trash. But you know, if it's your favorite game, whatever, I'm sorry. But again, I fucking hate that game. But <laughs> it, it just It's got some charm, but But it's got it's, some sweet fucking box art. And you would yeah, think yeah, yeah. looking at the box art, this game's gonna be fucking dope. If no. you looked at the box art and the screenshots, you would be sold on Dirge of Cerberus, I think. Right, and I think that's a lot of games back in the day. And yeah. it's funny because like I remember like Final Fantasy X, no mistaking that game. And the other cool thing about box art or boxes in general for games is that like you see the marketing on the box change too. Yeah. Do you remember on the back of Final Fantasy X, the big fucking thing on there was like 3D character models and uh, voiceover. Like, yeah, 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 we yeah. were at like, a period where, like, voiceover was just taking its, like, true form. Yeah. And, like, they put that on the box. Now, you would never see that on the box now because it's so commonplace. It's taken, yeah, for granted. But it's funny yeah. that, like, as marketing has changed, the things that they market changes. Like, yeah. you know, Oh, it's a voiceover, but now it's like, here's this feature, you know. There was actual things about the game that because those things were new, you were seeing them for the first time. Promoting it on the box itself, yeah. Right, and like, people that grow up now in in this era where like everything's kind of spoon-fed to you don't understand that like, 
back in the day, game you had to read your games, yeah. and voice acting wasn't always around. And so that is a big marketing thing back in the day that there's voices. Yeah, but, absolutely. But today everybody's like, well, that's just, you know, that's common. So why does that even have to be marketed, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the only thing I could say, like, voice acting wise that they market now is besides, like, who's voicing what characters, like, they do that on social right. media. But on the box specifically is, like, what, what language languages. what language the game is in, yeah. right? You know, so it's... It's just funny to me that like, so box art has has evolved over the years to where those things aren't necessary anymore. So one thing um, that that uh, is probably unique to uh, my country with when it comes to like PS2 specifically, well, and up to now, I guess, but we don't have very many manuals now. But the PS, so the PS1, I think the tail end of the PS1 that started, but the PS2 was where it was like very noticeable um so you're talking a, b- a bit about like the box art and like kind of like the manual kind of thing um so here with the ps1 games we would get two manuals we'd get an english one and a french one and uh but the the ps2 it was all one thick ass manual yeah and like and like <laughs> those clips are only like so big so we would get like this it would be in english and then the french was jammed in there as well and so like the clips the, would break the clips would like be fucking they wouldn't break but they were barely holding that thing in there and it was like it was just like the thickest fuck i just remember the manuals being so thick on the ps2 well and i like i think back in the day too did you <sighs> I don't think so much anymore because we're more of a digital age now, but all of my PS1 cases got broke because they're that that flimsy hard plastic. Yeah, I wouldn't say they got broke, but there was like there's they were always scratched and there was some of them had like little cracks in them that yeah. like you couldn't always see, but if you like tilted it in the light, you would be able to see it. And there was the odd one where like the hinges would fucking break yeah. on the or, PS1 or, cases. Or the, but the PS2 cases would have like where you'd go to the pop the disc out like oh and the little grabbers would like the, break the off clips would break off and shit yeah. and like you'd have a hole where that used to be and it sucks is like that's we used to have to use sleeves like uh you know the flip the flip uh cases that yeah, you yeah, buy like the cd bo- the cd cases yeah which i don't think that's i mean there are people that use them now still but that's way less of a thing than it used to be because our cases anymore like i think the cases now are pretty solid durable yeah right or i like never used the cases those. that that had the you know how they close like the ps2 cases close and for whatever like for whatever reason the, the actual like clamps yeah would, would wear out and then you couldn't close the ps2 case properly oh i've never had that it's same with same with like the uh like I never used the binder, the the disc binder things for for any of my PS One games and stuff, but I know like my buddy Mike did. Um, but do you remember? Do you remember like back when we would use like? Do you ever use like a discman in your car and you had to use the cassette to go in the cassette thing? Yeah, so play your discman dude, through the speakers, dude. I was doing that like fucking five years. Or well, probably longer than that. <laughs> I was I was doing it like ten years ago. Still, I had really? a, I had a car. That- that had a tape deck in it. It was like one of the last few cars I ever had that had a tape deck in it. And I went to Walmart and bought a fucking... One of those things, the, those adapters. The, the cassette adapters, and would use, like, my phone. And you have to make sure you... Oh, yeah, because, yeah, my, my buddy uh, Sean did that. He used his phone and hooked it up to his phone instead of, like, a Discman. Yeah, yeah back yeah. when phones still had fucking headphone jacks. Yeah, yeah. But I, I remember you had to get, like, a... What was it like an anti anti shock so that so that when you hit bumps in your car it wouldn't skip the CD and then uh, and then do you remember you you you'd be like driving down the highway and you're reaching up because everybody kept their discs up up in like the yeah that the, little the visor. visory thing yeah and you're like so now it's I just find it so funny because now everyone's like well don't check your phone don't change the song on your phone while you're driving meanwhile in like the fucking two thousands. <laughs> We have like this fucking binder of discs. We, we're steering with our knees. We've got a binder of discs. We look at the road every now and again. And then, and we're like, what CD should we put in, boys? <laughs> my dad. Oh, my God. One time my sister uh, got into an accident. She rear ended somebody because <laughs> she was, 
not very hard. She was at a stoplight or whatever. Right, right. But she was uh, trying to get a CD or whatever. She was messing with the radio, and she wouldn't like tell my dad that she did it. Right, but he, but he knew. Yeah and, yeah, and he's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip that fucking radio out of your car if you <laughs> if you don't start fucking paying attention while you're driving." And it was, just, it's just really funny that you bring that up because that it's <sighs> as soon as you said those disc binders, that was the first thing that came to my mind. I remember like doing road trips with my friends and like whoever was driving would be like, "Grab the wheel, I gotta, I gotta find the next <laughs> CD, <laughs> right?" And you're, you're like, Dude, I do that I, like... even when I'm even when I'm changing <laughs> even when I'm changing the fucking song on my phone. Sometimes my wife will grab, like, we're on the interstate or something, and my wife will grab the fucking steering wheel for me. And I'm like, That's so funny, dude. I'm like, You're a real one, you know? That's so funny, dude. Because, yeah, that's completely different than how it is now. But, yeah, like the disc binders, it's so funny because, like, I still have some of them. And I went through and I found, like, my Yu Gi Oh! Forbidden Memories. And I found, like, Oh, yeah, on PS1. Yeah, all this other, like, all these other PS1 games, like, my Capcom versus SNK2 is in there. Oh, nice! Uh, yeah, my King Best of Fighter game of all time, but right, my King of Fighters and Tekken Three was in there. Like, yeah, I still have those binders and shit, and it's really funny. But I, I forget sometimes like how much. It's almost like a decluttering kind of situation. Like people, things got more convenient. Like you know, you use your phone for music now, so you're not thumbing yeah, through you CDs, to... and you're not like putting your games and movies and, and stuff, and DVD cases are everywhere, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. You don't have that anymore because it's it's a digital age now, but it's just so funny when you look back and you're like, holy shit, like, there's a lot of stuff that was super inconvenient, but we didn't care at the time, because at that time, that was like an advance in technology. Oh, like, absolutely. You know, you weren't having case, uh, like, cassettes would get worn out, and the tapes yeah. and the tape in them would like start would, like, fraying or whatever. Yeah. But you didn't have that with discs and it was like more convenient. But even though it's more oh, expensive, it was way better. you like you had all these things. And, and you could choose the song. Like if you didn't right. like the song, you could skip it. Whereas with the cassette, you'd have to fast forward, hit play. Nope, still the shitty one. <laughs> right. And, <laughs> and the thing going. is, like the PS2 era, like PS1, PS2 and stuff, like when you started uh, your console up, the startup sound. Ah, uh, yeah, they and didn't really the, have that till the PS One, I don't think. Yeah, right? and, and or no, the, well, the Gen, the the Master System and Genesis kind of did. The Sega CD, a hundred percent did. It had that do 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 do. But right. um, but Gen, the Genesis, the only reason it did is because they would put it at the start of their games. Whereas, right. like the Sega CD, if you just turned it on, there was no game in. You would you would actually get the startups. Well, screen. and on and on that note, I guess like you could say that the um. The Super Nintendo also had it because, like, whenever you'd start, it would always go through, right? Or, uh, the uh, well, the PlayStation, no, maybe it was just Nintendo that had it at the thing. The N64 had it, like, you'd play Pokemon Stadium and, like, the N64 logo would roll around and then, like, Pikachu would come out. And then, yeah, but that was that was in the game, that wasn't right. Console, right? I think the console startup, I think the PS1 was one of the first few. Yeah, Sega CD, then PS1, probably, yeah. I would say. And like, and then from then on, I think everything has it now. Well, they do to an extent, but they're much more, like, basic. It's like a right. thing, well, or I guess, like... Yeah, I guess now they don't, because you have, like, your menu screen and stuff, right, right with everything, um, so... So, like, I like you can't... Startup screens are fucking iconic as hell, like, especially, yeah. like... The, the GameCube play- one? Yeah. <laughs> like the... <laughs> and then you know like the ps2 had yeah. that one you know or it was like the the playstation one one is the best i think oh i agree down. um the gamecube had the really long one the gamecube yeah. actually <laughs> yeah the gamecube <laughs> actually had alternate ones that you could get if you had like i think if you held certain buttons on the controller oh, really you could get I, alternate ones I, that's cool i think it was the gamecube um but yeah like i feel like the ps2 era had some of the best like enhancements the best video games like the best atmosphere like even People just actually started using the multi-tap i feel yeah, like with the, the ps2 the multi-tap uh you know i i remember like me and my buddies would hang out and play ps2 all the time yeah same. and it was just 
I feel like even though back in the day, like we didn't have the internet as much, like the PS2 kind of started the internet on the consoles. Absolutely. Thing. Like you had it, it, it started the internet, but it didn't like rely on the internet to make the right. games not suck. And also that was where like that, I feel like the biggest game that, that started the whole like online gaming console thing is like SOCOM. Like SOCOM yeah. was fucking huge back well, in the day. And Halo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Halo 2, definitely. Yeah. Um, but you know, but but that was the same generation. You know what I right. mean? Like it was that generation. Where now, obviously, Socom, Halo. Obviously, like PC had it way before that. But like on yeah, yeah, console yeah. But wise, for console, yeah, yeah, yeah. Console, Xbox, and and PlayStation Two. And like I I didn't play much on the internet on PlayStation same. Two because we like I said we didn't have internet and I never really played games where internet was like a big focus. I was a very single player oriented gamer. And, like, I had friends that we'd actually go to each other's houses and play back then. So, yeah. like, not until, like, the PS3 and Xbox 360 did I really start playing online. And Same, even then... Yeah. And that's because my friends all, like, we all, like, right. gro- grooved up, grooved up. We all grooved up, moved away, <laughs> brother. <laughs> but, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck. But anyway, like, you know, I had this friend that we all... So, we had three friends and we all lived in the same town, right? Yeah, and, and in the town that we lived in, it only had a hundred people in it, and so like we were very, very close, like yeah, proximity wise. And our buddy lived out like on a gravel road, but that was still only like a mile away from us. Yeah, so we yeah. would go out there and we would be set up in his room, and we'd had we had three TVs in his room, and we would all bring our Xboxes over and play like Call of Duty and Halo and Gears of War and like a bunch of other right. stuff but before that we were all playing on PS2 and we were not doing it on the internet but we were still bringing it over to our friends houses or they were coming over to our house or you know stuff like that and I yeah. feel like back then I made a lot of great memories on the PS2 because that was like the first time that I had played a bunch of multiplayer games with my friends like I didn't yeah. back when I was growing up the PS1 I didn't have that many friends that came over to my house. Right, right. Or like I went over to their houses cuz we kind of lived like in an offshoot and like my parents worked all the time so they didn't want to drive me and stuff and Right. So it was hard to get to my friends' houses, but like and our school district encompasses like a lot of small towns outside of my current oh, town. Oh, so you were going to, you were like making friends with people that weren't even like necessarily right. in your town. Right. So it was really hard to connect in the PS one days, but in the PS two days we'd moved and some of my friends lived in the small town. Like my main friends lived in the small town that I moved to fortunately right. enough. And so like we were able to play PS two and stuff together. So the PS two was like the first time that I really got into multiplayer gaming and because I wasn't a PC gamer back then, obviously, because we just didn't have yeah. the money for PC gaming. But and back then, PC gaming was fucking ridiculously expensive. Like it still yeah. is now. But if you can, it was honestly it, worse than console for the right. most part, like the games you had back then. Right. And so, like I said, I think the PS2 was the first time that I really embraced multiplayer gaming. And like me and my friends would play Madden like fucking crazy. Guitar Hero. Um, yeah, Brian, you know, I forgot Guitar Hero was on like PS2. Yeah, like Guitar Hero the... started on PS2. Yeah. Um, you know, and then it evolved into Rock Band and stuff like that. So like my yeah. roots in multiplayer gaming and like my roots with my friends starts really at the PS2 era. And I, I always remember it for that because I had a lot of great memories there's a lot of great games. It was a really high selling console, so there was always somebody to find that was playing games. Yeah, that's you know? true. And back in the day, like borrowing games and stuff was a big deal because, you know, until the PS3 where we had online capability to buy games, you didn't buy games online. Yeah. You know, that's so true. you could you bought a PS2 game, your buddy at school's like, hey, I just beat Devil May Cry, the first one or whatever. And you're like, oh, I just beat, like, I don't know, fucking Enter the Matrix. Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, I want to play Devil May Cry. Oh, I want to play Enter the Matrix. So you yeah, swap you games and it. shit. And then, like, yeah. you'd come to school the next day and talk about how fucking awesome, like, the games yeah. that you had played and everything else. And that was like... And then you'd be like, did you get to this part yet? Like, Right. I mean, and we a, still do that today. Right, but it, right. And a lot of series... kind of like... A lot of series, yes, they got started on the PlayStation 1 or even before... But I think the PlayStation 2, like, Devil May Cry started on the PlayStation 2. 
you know, um, God of War. God of War started on the PlayStation 2, and those franchises are still running to this Ratchet day. Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank are running yeah. to this day, and it's it's cool because, like, we remember what those games were like back then, yeah. and now we're still getting games in those series for better or worse. And I, I, I think the PS2 solidified a lot of those series that we that we enjoy today or or at least inspired those series that we enjoy today i think i think a big thing about the ps2 uh sh- which shows how well it holds up too is like when the when they started doing like just like e- hd remasters on the ps4 mm-hmm. and like pretty much all of them hold up like very well um but uh i i wanted to talk about um how the ps2 was also kind of like the last era where games being fun was more important than games games telling a serious narrative or um games being um like like i always when it comes to like movies i always say like oh that's a movie that was just made to try and win an award you didn't really have those you had them on the ps2 but the focal point on the ps2 was still just making fun games like for example like ratchet and clank like you still have the you have like ratchet and clank's probably the only series today on like PS4 and stuff that's just kind of wacky and fun but now it, it seems like since the PS3 games have been like trying to be too serious take themselves too seriously well as but technology had... advanced like with mocap suits and and voice yeah. acting and stuff like that they wanted to be more serious and like gaming has caught up with Hollywood when it comes to like telling a story telling and... a story portraying a story like in yeah, visuals dramatic. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that makes but, a lot of sense that it would transition that way because it's become more, I would say, more corporatized than it used to be. But I miss that that charm of like that kind of goofy, zany. Like even, um, we'll even look at like, so, so the Genesis and stuff had like NBA Jam and stuff. But do you remember PS2 had like NBA Street? Yeah, it had. Oh my was god, like those games NFL, were... wasn't there an NFL one yep. as well? NFL, they went all the way up to I think NFL Street Three. Yeah, and, and like Def Jam Vendetta. Yes, like, there was so many good like games that were like fun. Was the fucking the top like like who cares? The graphics might not be the best. Our primary fucking thing we're going for here is a, to make a fun ass game. Right and now, I feel like that's not the the objective anymore. Really? Yeah, you, they want high quality looking game which i don't blame them for wanting high quality visuals and stuff but right right but I, fun, I feel like i miss the day when fun was the primary objective right. of making making a game right i mean it's like if it's not fun why are you doing it right yeah it, it's called a <clears throat> game bro <laughs> yeah. games are supposed to be fun and and i'm i appreciate a game that tries to tell me a story like obviously Same. Like, so do like, I. Like, like obviously we play jrpgs we play rpgs yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like obviously story is not like an issue with us but like your story can be fantastic but if your game's not fun to play yeah. Like I'm gonna get less enjoyment out of it, even though story is like my main focus. Right. Like I, I, I like the story of Armored Core Six, but I'm playing the game because it's it's fast, fun, balls to the wall, gun hell. Yeah. Like it's a bullet hell game at its core, no pun intended, and it's just a lot of fun, and that's that's what I'm enjoying. It's not the the fucking super spectacular visuals that it has. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. the fact that it's the fun. gameplay itself. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. The and I, I'm invested in the story. Like I like it. It's very basic right yeah, it's now. Not the, it's not the point. That's not the reason you got the game though. Either, right. 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 As of chapter one, the story is not super involved yet. It's, it's ramping up, but my enjoyment of it has not been the story. Even yeah. though I am enjoying the story, my enjoyment has come from doing the builds and playing with new guns and doing all this other stuff that that like encompasses everything in the game, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the uh, like the reason the biggest reason to me that Dreamcast failed a obviously the DVD player, but B is um, Sega has always been the best at like arcade style games. And I feel like the PS2 still had like that arcade feel. And then as and then I feel like PlayStation was like, OK, the the reason our console succeeded is because we went 
we kind of left that arcade feel in the dust uh, for the most part. And then I feel since the PS3, it's gotten further and further from that like arcadey fun feel. And I feel like we need to kind of go back to that a little bit, like, like have, have the serious stories, but still have points that have like that arcade level Mm -hmm. of, of zaniness and fun. You know what I mean? Like, I I really miss that. I feel like, I feel like that's why uh, the PS2 genre, like, like era GameCube era has that kind of charm to it that, Mm -hmm. that we we're missing today for the most part. Like, obviously there's exceptions to that, but that was like the main, like every game had it back then. Yeah, and I feel like even though like the Nintendo and and Sega rivalry kind of kicked off the console wars, yeah, I don't feel like the PS2 era really felt like that. Like, no, it didn't. I feel like I feel like it was different. I feel like you either had you had a PlayStation, you were a PlayStation guy, or you were an N64 guy, and you didn't argue because you just had one and didn't give a shit about the other if you had one for right. the most part. And whereas and, with genesis and super nintendo the games the style of games were still so similar that it was like no mine's better you know what right. i mean like yeah well and obviously like you know you had games like you know halo that you could only play on xbox and you had yeah. like so you know, bombed on ps2 right final fantasy that you could only play on playstation and stuff and so like i felt back in the day it wasn't necessarily like console wars, even though you could probably I'm sure there was like, I'm sure there it was, wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't to the extent that it was. On I the, think the again, I think the Internet and the more people started using it, the more people started getting this idea that it was one versus the other. And yeah. it, back then, to me anyway, now I could be wrong. It could have been very prevalent and I just wasn't paying attention to me, it did not feel that way. Like, none of my friends were like, oh, you want a PlayStation? You fucking loser. Get an Xbox. Yeah, or, yeah. Or vice versa, because, like, we just didn't think that way. It sucked when your friend had a console you didn't because you couldn't trade games. But you could still go over to your friend's house and play it, and it would still be yeah. cool. And, like, a lot of the time, the reason why I bought an Xbox or I bought an Xbox 360 was because... Whichever one your friends all had first kind of thing. Well... Yes, I bought a PS2 before I bought a regular Xbox, but I bought that Xbox because my friends all had PS2s, and then my buddy Ben bought an Xbox, and we all played right. it, and we're like, well, fuck, this is awesome, we'll we'll buy an Xbox. So I went out and I bought an Xbox, and I had both, and depending on what games I wanted to play, I would buy one or the other. And back then, I kind of was able to do that, because not every console was fucking six hundred dollars yeah that's true you know and that's the thing like i enjoyed both consoles for different reasons for different reasons and i think it's because they had like like you like i kind of said like they had completely different target audiences and it and their games had a completely different vibe like n64 was a different vibe than ps1 PS2 was a different vibe than Xbox. You were going to buy a PS2 to play first person shooters. You were going to play an Xbox to to buy first person shooters. Right. Same with like West most western RPGs were on the Xbox. Most JRPGs were on the PS2. Like I feel like that's why it wasn't such a console war cuz it's like if you like these, you're going to get this console. Why are you going to there's no point in like comparing and arguing because you you bought this console because it's this one suits those needs and this one suits these needs kind of yeah. thing. You know what I mean? And if you like both, then back then game, consoles weren't so expensive, so you could get both if you were interested in both. But you'd play this one to play those games, right? And this one to play these kinds of games. Well, and then obviously with like the invention of Xbox Live and stuff like that, like yeah, you know, if you wanted to play online, most of the time you were gonna buy an Xbox. You know, if that wasn't your thing, if you wanted single player experiences like PS3, you could just go with a PS2 or PS3 or whatever, and that would be okay. Yeah. But but it it just felt like we all coexisted back then. Yeah. And then the internet point where. yeah, Yeah. And then the internet became more prominent. And now it's you get on Twitter and you can scroll for five seconds and you're going to see fucking 10 console war posts or people bitching or people bitching about the people that are in the console war bullshit like yeah my my worst thing is like um right now you see people that are like oh playstation fans are crying because of this and it's like 
It's like you see more more posts about them saying that those people are crying than you do that. Like I've never actually seen a PlayStation person complain that a game was on Xbox, but mm-hmm. I instead I see people on Xbox saying that PlayStation fans are crying about games on Xbox. Yeah, I've I've never liked Xbox. And the main reason is because of the controller. I don't like the the weird like twisty joystick yeah. fucking thing they got going on there. But I mean, and and so it wasn't it wor- until I it think works this- great for first person shooters. Yeah, I don't even think so. But I this year was the first. I think it was this year I finally bought an Xbox 360, and it's just so I can eventually play Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey, which is but, a great choice. Yeah, but uh, I've that's the I have like probably like 20 some consoles and for the longest time none of them were xbox so as much as i'm a playstation fan i'm probably more anti xbox but Mm -hmm. at the same time i don't give a shit if you buy an xbox like to me now all games to me should go to all consoles it should just be preference on controller and interface that's all that it should be to me it should all come to pc fucking obviously the switch is a special case i'd still prefer everything to come to switch but I, I understand, like, they're not going to downgrade their game just so it can fucking... Well, release. and I also agree, like, first-party games, like, you know, Halo is a strictly Xbox game. It's made by Xbox and Microsoft, like... Right, and like, people like me who have never bought an Xbox have zero interest in Halo, so I, we don't care, right? Right. Like, you know what I mean? And so, like, I understand, like, first-party titles, but I think any third-party title should be multi-console. Right. Yeah, and everything should be cross-play as well. That drives me fucking crazy that you can't play on i can't play my friends who are playing on pc on a console and in fucking 2023 exactly it's so ridiculous like it's becoming more prominent but it's still an issue it is still an issue in the ps2 era we really took a lot of things for granted especially like yeah we did because we i feel like we as gamers grew up in the right era like the right time frame for us to well, really we saw it all right we, we yeah saw we, it, the we changes pretty... from 8-bit to 16-bit to third to like 3d right. polygon to ps I, I think super nintendo to ps1 was the biggest jump there'll ever be and then i think ps1 to ps2 is the second biggest jump there right ever be. and i think what's funny about it is it's like when we were playing the NES, like we were like, "Oh, this is the this is the greatest thing. This will be the best that games ever get, right?" And then, like, yeah. you know, you. I didn't uh, feel that until the PS2. When I played Metal right. Gear Solid Two for the first time, I was like, "This is the most realistic games can possibly ever get, dude." Like, and there are some PS2 games that still kind of hold up a little bit. Yeah, they do. Like, like Final Fantasy Twelve. I think that game still holds up. Well, if you, especially if you pop them in like an emulator, like the, what is that, P, PPSS2 or whatever, the PCPS2 or whatever yeah, it's, it's PCSX2 called. PCSX2 or something like that. Yeah. If you play Dragon Quest Eight on maximum settings on that, it looks like a PS4 game. Like, hands down. It's fucking crisp as fuck. So I don't know how they do that. Like, were the assets originally like that high quality when they put them in the game? And then I when think they put just, them on the console, it's it, just upscaling. But how does that work? Like, how do they it's make like an that AI console? thing? Is it? Yeah, they kind of use... That was crazy, man, how, right. how good they make that shit look. Like, especially, especially PS2 games. Because I use my PlayStation Classic to play PS1 games, and it upscales them, and they look a lot nicer than they do if I just run them from my PS1. Right. But the the way PS2 games can look, like, 1080p, like, it is... Cr- and it is crisp. Yeah. Like, how they make those models look like what they looked like to us back then is insane. It's so crazy. Yeah, how they can it, get that crispness out of those old models like that. Right. And it's like the PS2 had a lot of good. Obviously, there was a lot of janky stuff back then because they were still kind yeah. of trying to figure it out. But Burn. yeah, yeah, the, the PS2 had some of the some of the best looking games. Well, even like, the original what, what always drives me crazy is the uh, the HD remaster of Final Fantasy X. The, they redid the character models and they look fucking terrible compared yeah. to the original PS2 ones. I agree. Yeah, I, which is super weird. It is, and it's like you would think, like with the invention of modern technology, that it wouldn't be that way, but it really is. You're right. Yeah, they look better on the the, the PS2 models look better. So the best way to play uh, Final Fantasy X, the original one, is to still fire up the fucking PS2 version in an emulator and up and like just crank all the settings. So 
If you had to give your top five PS2 games of all time, what would they be? I can go first if you need time. Yeah, you go first. That's a tough one for me. Okay, so my number one is obviously going to be Final Fantasy X. Um, It's my second favorite game of all time, so that's that's right. pretty uh that's gonna be pretty obvious. Um I would say my number two, and it's purely because of nostalgia, I know the game has not aged well. Uh Enter the Matrix. Right. Um I, I would say it so long, man. Test Drive Eve of, De- Eve of Destruction is another good one. Um Dirt of Cerberus. Yeah, of course. That that actually is my number one. I lied. Right. Uh, fucking game. So disappointed. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to sound like a fucking douchebag when I say this, but Madden 06. <laughs> my, or no, Ma- Madden 06. It's tough. They're all the same. Because Madden, Madden 04 might be one of the greatest Maddens ever. Um, Madden 05 invented the hit stick, so I'm probably gonna go with Madden 05, um, as my number four. And number six, uh, number five is one that I played the ever living fuck out of. MLB The Show 06. Oh, yeah, I figured you'd play that one. Favorite uh, baseball game super ever. Super popular. Yeah, MLB The Show 06 is my favorite baseball game of all time. Um, I know people that still play and stream that on Twitch, actually. It might be my favorite sports game of all time. Besides Better maybe- than Ken Griffey Jr.? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Like, So I do top 10 videos as like my main thing on, on my YouTube channel. So I, I will eventually get to like top 10 in PS2. But off the top of my head, I would have to put... I mean, number one's probably Dragon Quest Eight. It's not my favorite Dragon Quest game, but it's still, it's fucking, it's so high quality. Like, ke- like you have to keep in mind that until Dragon Quest VIII, the, uh, the Final Fantasy or the Dragon Quest games were um, pixels art still. You know what I mean? Like, Final Fantasy had moved away. Most JRPGs had moved away from that on the PS1, but the, the PS1 Dragon Quest games looked like Final Fantasy Tactics, where it was like pixel art on top of like a 3D plane. Um, So the first like fully realized 3D environment polygon look Dragon Quest game was Dragon Quest VIII, and it looked phenomenal like at the time, right? And still does. Um, So that would be number one. Number two, man, it's so hard. I probably would go with Dark Cloud 2, even though it's a game I've never finished because my fucking memory card got corrupted when I got super oh. far into that game. Um, but I just remember really, really liking that game. Uh, and and pretty much anything level 5 touched was just gold back then, including Dragon Quest VIII. Um, and then the third one would probably be, yeah, Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X was just so fucking good. Uh, especially... Especially like that jump in in just visual quality, mm-hmm. musical quality, voice all acting that stuff, voice acting. Like it was just it was just really good in that. I missed I missed the exploration. Like it's not one of my favorite favorite Final Fantasy games because of that. But this but story wise, ten is one of the strongest by far. Um, what is that three? Fuck, I don't know. What what would be number four? Uh, Dragon Ball Z Sagas. <laughs> no, that game was that's one of the worst. Probably the, Star Wars Battlefront 2. That's the dirt this. that's the dirge of Cerberus of fucking Yeah, Dragon, Dragon Ball, Ball games. Z games. But no, I would I would probably say Battlefront 2. That's Star a Wars good Battlefront one. 2 was fucking I played the shit out of that. And I so got an I. online adapt like a network adapter just to play that one online. Um and then f- five, man, I gotta look. Oh fuck! Sorry, five would be Metal Gear Solid three. Like, oh nice, it'd, yes, pro- it'd probably be. It'd probably actually that'd probably actually be my number one. Metal Gear Solid uh, three would probably be number one, and then shuffle everything down from there. I would say. Honor- honorable mention for me, and I I I want to put it in my top five, but I was trying to like diversify a little bit because I loved back in the day. I loved. I love RPGs and I've always loved RPGs, but back in the PS2 era, I really loved sports games because right. uh, I feel like that was when they were at their best. Um, 
I really loved uh, like Enter the Matrix, like action shooter, 3D, right, you know, right. or like third person shooter games. Um, but I think honorable mention wise, I would have to go. Uh, let's see. Final yeah, Fantasy X X X. <laughs> yeah, Final <laughs> Fantasy twelve uh, is up there. I want to put it in my top five, but I I want to diversify a little bit and not just put RPGs. Um, and then was Resident Evil four on PS two? Event. Uh, yeah, eventually. Yeah, that's what I played it on. Okay, PS2. yeah. So I would put Resident Evil four up there as well. Yeah, um, that was a good one. You know, there's so many games from back then. Those are probably my top five, plus my two honorable mentions. Yeah, the PS2 had some great games. I like the PS1 better still, overall, but uh, PS2 is probably a second or third favorite console of all time. And you you brought up something, actually, about PS2 that, that reminded me. I don't think that people will ever understand what it's like anymore because we don't do memory cards anymore we do onboard storage you know and there's cloud yeah. there's cloud saving there's backup saves there's stuff you can do to protect your save data yeah when a corrupt memory card back in the file. fucking day we didn't have that and the problem with with my ps2 memory card i don't know about yours but whenever i got a corrupted file it wouldn't let you delete it oh really mine would like yeah I, mine would let me delete it Thanks so fuck. i had a save file that was like I want to say, because what was it? Uh, was it the memory cards on the PS2 were eight megabytes? Yeah, there were eight. You get eight, and I think you could get 16 as well. They just I, cost more. I had a save file, and I don't remember how big it was, but it was like, it was pretty big. And it took up a lot of space, and it wouldn't let me delete it, but it was corrupted. Oh my god! So, so it was just wasted space. So it was just wasted space, and I was so pissed about that. And I don't think people will ever like. I that's a memory that I feel like only people that grew up with that stuff, yeah, will will appreciate or remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we don't have that anymore. We have cloud saving. We have you know backup plans. Like you can plug in a hard drive and save your your yeah your fucking data and to most, it. Yeah, pretty much all of it gets saved to the cloud now too. Right. Um. I do have before we wrap. I do have one really fucking bad uh memory card corruption story. So I had borrowed um Digimon World Two from my buddy Paul, and I was like, man, I was like, it's like one of the grindiest fucking JRPGs you'll ever play in your life. It's like a dungeon crawler JRPG, and uh, I had put probably like. 30 some hours into this game and just got basically just got the Digimon that I had wanted to like play out the rest of the game with. And I, I remember getting home from school and, and I was like, fuck yeah. Cause I, I think I got it like the night before I finally got that Digimon and I saved my game. And the night, the day next day after school, I like, you know, I run upstairs and I fire up the game and I go to load it. And it's like memory card, file corrupted Ooh. and and i was so mad and it's like remember, remember that video of that guy getting so mad that his world of warcraft account got oh he yeah, that remote yeah, yeah. Up his ass it was bas <laughs> i basically had my shove the remote up your ass moment here so <laughs> i grabbed i was so mad dude I grabbed the mattress off of my bed and fucking power bombed it down the <laughs> stairs. And my mom was just like, what the fuck, bro? I was, dude, I was that's, so mad. Bro, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I fucking, yeah, like down. And we have like this old antique fucking house with like this old wooden railway and rail railing and shit. And I just fucking grabbed, I was like punching my mattress. I was so <laughs> mad. And I just fucking grabbed it, ran Bro. up to the landing, and just fucking, ugh, just fucking power bomb that <laughs> mattress down the stairs. Dude. Was, that was the most angry I ever got, at, like in regards to video games. Bro, my whole life. I think the most angry I ever got at a video game was probably like, I, so, <sighs> fuck, I, there's so many times I've gotten really angry, <laughs> but uh, God, I don't remember the angriest I've ever gotten at a video game. But it, I, there was I a broke lot. a lot of controllers. I oh yeah, a lot of so controllers did I. In my day, I started I started throwing my controllers into like the couch and like pillows and stuff because um, 
Yeah, I broke a lot of controllers. Well, the problem is they fucking bounce off the couch and then they like hit something really expensive. Yeah, that happens too. I've I've had it where like I knock, I threw it and knocked something off of like a fucking shelf or something. But I used it. What I used to do when I when I, when I first moved here is like because I would always like throw the controller at the ground and it would just like fucking spin and bounce and pieces would go flying. Um, but but in this place, I have a brick fucking like fireplace over here. And I would fucking throw it and so if it hit the brick, the, the controller was done, man. It would just shatter into like fucking a million pieces. So that's when I was like, okay, I get if I'm gonna do it, I gotta throw it into the couch. Dude, but I okay, I, 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 I haven't I, done that in a long time. The last game that made me break a controller was Sonic Unleashed on the PS3. So real talk, real quick. Uh one I, this isn't the most mad I ever got at a video game, but this is a very specific memory because my wife gives me shit about it all the time. So, when we lived at our old house, I was playing NBA 2K online in a league with with some people I knew, and I got beat, and I shouldn't have gotten beat. The game fucked me, and I got so goddamn mad, I chucked my fucking controller down. It hit my wall, and it put a hole in the drywall. Like, I went full fucking Kyle on this bitch, right? So, I... Put the whole, funny story, man. I put the Keep hole finishing. in the drywall, and if you look at the hole, it looks like like something got pushed into it, or like it wasn't a hole. It was more like an, a, a yeah, very yeah. very deep dent. Like yeah. if it had been pushed any farther, it would have been a hole. And I, my wife comes home, and she sees, dude, it's so embarrassing. She too. sees the dent in the wall. And she goes, what happened? And I lied. <laughs> what, did you, what was the story? I told her that I was playing with the dog and he put his paw. Like, it, <laughs> like, like he stuck his back foot out to like run or something and he kicked the wall and put that mark there. And my wife's like, okay, you know, whatever. Well, then I guess she didn't tell me this until I finally admitted it. But she put my controller against the hole in the wall to oh, see if it matched no. up. And she waited for me to finally tell her the fucking truth about it. Oh my and it God. took me forever to tell her. And so now she gives me fucking shit all the time because she had her dad come over and look at the hole first. Oh, my God. And, and he's like, I don't think that was a dog paw, but he wasn't like he didn't realize, like, be a bro and don't fucking tell her. You know, right. he's just like, yeah, that doesn't look like a dog put that there. And I'm like, <laughs> sounds like your boyfriend's a fucking psycho. So, yeah. So she's, <laughs> so she's like, oh, yeah, you know, I don't think it's so either. So she held the controller to the fucking hole in the wall and figured it uh, out. And I was like, fuck. And I had to tell her, you know, and she's like, oh, I already knew. And I was like, God damn it. So now all the time she's like, so how often do you lie to me? You know, oh, all that God. shit, you know, and I was just yeah. like, just when, it's an, just when it's embarrassing. Yeah. Just when it's fucking embarrassing, you know, <laughs> but yeah, so, that's, that's one of the times, but I think the most mad I got, and I think I freaked out my fucking neighbor. This was when I was still living at home with my parents. We had this old VCR for kids that remember what that fucking is. We yeah. had this, we had this v VCR, right? And it didn't work. <laughs> as they never really did right, the time. <laughs> right so it didn't work and it was just sitting there and i was like i was fucking mad but i didn't want to break my controller i didn't want to throw it i mean i did want to throw it but i i i was in a place where i was like fuck i'm so mad but i don't want to do this so i took i had a baseball bat and this fucking vcr <laughs> And I ran out my fucking door with this VCR by the cord, by the way. I I was holding it by the cord, and I swung it over my head and slammed it into the fucking driveway. And then I started fucking beating it to death with a baseball bat, like, in fucking office space. And, like, I'm fucking yelling. I'm, like, beating this fucking vcr with the baseball bat you know and like i'm Dude, the loud. reverb on your hands probably oh, yeah. hurt right? i'm being loud oh i was so mad i didn't give a shit like i was in rage. <laughs> it was like i was having roid rage even though i wasn't on yeah, roids yeah, you know rage. and i know i freaked out my fucking neighbors because they kind of like like our neighbors were like right next door like there was probably <laughs> fucking maybe maybe 30 feet from the side of our house to our to their house you know yeah. And so, like, I could see them looking at me out there as I'm beating this. I turn around and I see him, and then I fucking go back to beating the shit out of this fucking VCR with the baseball bat. 
And like, they never brought it up, but I know they knew that I was out there fucking freaking out about something. <laughs> So they're like, oh, my God. They're probably thinking, like, oh, my God, the neighbor boy is on drugs or something. <laughs> yeah. And, dude, I was so goddamn mad. But I came back in the house, and I beat the part that I was working on, and it fucking was okay. But, like, I'm I'm surprised that my neighbors didn't say anything to my parents because I was not, yeah, no sh- I was not yeah. shy at the time about fucking beating the shit out of that thing. That's funny. So I got two quick stories. One's just a couple sentences. Um... So imagine that gamer rage playing a really hard game. Like you've played a Contra game before, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, they're tough as shit. Hard right? as fuck. Yeah, yeah. So they put Contra 4 on the fucking DS. You can't throw Aww. the controller because it's the fucking console. <laughs> so I I just remember being so mad and just using all my restraint to not throw my <laughs> DS. But my last story. And it's very similar to your drywall story. Um, so I'm friends with Evan Thompson, who's like uh, the UFC fighter, yeah, like the UFC fighter. Boy Thompson's brother. Yeah. Um, and he he was streaming, and uh, oh my cat just dropped a fucking nuke. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, he was streaming, and he got so mad, and he fucking through his controller and it got stuck in the drywall and then it was so funny because he's like calling me on like discord and he's like he's like i'm like what are you doing man he's like he's like it's fucking <laughs> it's like fucking two in the morning and i'm at walmart buying stuff to fix the drywall <laughs> so my wife doesn't kill me <laughs> so he's, like, he's like buying fucking putty and stuff and paint <laughs> in the middle of the night at walmart <laughs> So his wife wouldn't kill him. The next oh morning. my god, that's fucking hilarious, dude! I yeah. remember one time. Holy fuck! I remember one time. Uh, I literally like I I had a Game Boy Advance, like the the fucking weird bodied one. You know, yeah, the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the wide. I was playing. I want to say it was <laughs> Pokemon Ruby or Sapphire. Smells so bad over here. And, right? I, <laughs> and I got. So- I got so mad. I fucking punched the screen of my of my fucking Game Boy. And those things were like tanks back in the day, too. I punched the screen of my fucking Game Boy. And uh, I put like a big black hole like oh, where, where, the, where, it, the, where the screen had, had broke. They probably but, had like that calculator thing. Hey, how right, like when you crack right. it. But the game itself was still playing. But it was a big hole in the middle, so like there was no playing games, right? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do, so I told my mom that I dropped it. Oh yeah, it fell on a rock or something. Right. Dude, so my PSP I... used to fall out of my locker at work and just fucking explode. Just <laughs> <laughs> the battery pack <laughs> covers was fucking garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but everything snapped back together nicely. But yeah, right. like, the whole back would like just pop off. On my PSP, I remember Dude, back. But yeah, that's how I ended up getting a Game Boy Advance SP because my mom thought I dropped it. <laughs> I hope she's not listening to this. I hope she is. God damn, it smells like shit in here. Holy <laughs> fucking shit. We got a wrap. We got a wrap. All right. Sounds dying. good. All right. Oh. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us on this uh this next nostalgia trip that we were on. Uh this was, you know, the gaming effect episode seven where we talked about the PlayStation 2 era and pretty much a little bit of everything from growing up. Um, it, it's funny that we we had all this talk and we had a lot of memories that we could share because, you know, we obviously both grew up in different locations, but we kind of had similar experiences with it. So yeah. uh, don't forget to rate and share the podcast on all the platforms, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Uh, and... You know, it, we really appreciate all the support, obviously. Uh, let us know your PlayStation 2 stories. Let us know, you know, some of your memories growing up playing games back in the day or, you know, when you were a, a daredevil or, you know, how things were growing up gaming wise and stuff like that. It, we'd really love to hear your stories and we love hearing the stories that we've gotten so far on the podcast. Yeah, and we'd like to just, hear from you guys, man. It, yeah, it we makes really our do. day for sure. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm excited. Don't forget, episode eight, our very next episode after this one airs, is going to be Final Fantasy Final VIII. Fantasy VIII. Finally, the discussion I have been waiting an entire two months to talk about, uh, podcast episode-wise, and, and 
what better episode than episode eight to honor Final Fantasy VIII? So look forward to that. Thank you for watching, guys. If you made it all the way to the end of the podcast, you guys are fucking awesome. We love you. Uh, I'm Alex, a.k.a. Soldier First Class. I'm Corey, a.k.a. Dookie03. Final Fantasy VIII, the true throat goat of the Final Fantasy franchise, if you will. <laughs> if you will. <laughs> so thank you all for watching slash listening. We love you all very much. And uh, this has been The Gaming Effect, Episode 7, a reflection on the PS2 days. We will catch you later, guys. See you guys. Just be glad you can't smell this podcast. (laughs) All right, later, guys.